Here's problem 2815. If the EMF of the battery is 24 volts, at what rate is thermal energy generated in the 5 ohm resistor shown in the circuit? If we're talking about rate of thermal energy generated, we are thinking of power. And in particular, if we're talking about a resistor, power would be I squared R, or power would be voltage squared divided by R. So we're looking for one of these two things. We need to find the current through that resistor or the voltage across that resistor so that we can employ one of these formulas. In this case, we have a 24 volt battery, an EMF of 24 volts, and um, let's just simplify the circuit a little bit. Let's take a look at this parallel combination of a 10 with a 10. Our parallel should be, for these two, product over the sum, 10 times 10 over 10 plus 10, which would be 100 over 20, or 5 ohms. So this is a 5 ohm parallel resistance for these two. And this circuit now looks like this. 24 volt battery with 10 ohms here and 5 ohms here and then now 5 ohms here with 10 ohms on the bottom here alright let's do uh, the series combination add them together we get 10 ohms for that so now our circuit looks like this 10 ohms here 10 ohms here, 10 ohms here, 24 volt battery. Alright, if we do this parallel combination here, we know that those two tens in parallel would be 5 uh, ohms. So now our circuit looks like this 5 ohms in series with 10 ohms. 24 volt battery. Add these two together in series and now our final circuit looks like this. 15 ohm resistance 24 volt battery. Okay. Alright, so the current coming out of our battery will be the voltage divided by the equivalent resistance and that will be 24 volts divided by 15 ohms which will give us 1.6 amps. That's the current coming out of the battery in any representation we choose. So it's coming out of the battery here 1.6 amps and it's coming out of the battery here 1.6 amps that means we have 1.6 amps going through this 5 ohm resistor in this representation. That means the voltage on that 5 ohm resistor would be equal to the current times the resistance 1.6 amps times 5 ohms which would be 8 volts. So that means that there is 8 volts across this 5 ohm resistor. Well that would mean also that there would be 8 volts across the parallel combination of the 10 with the 10 because things in parallel have the same voltage and they have the same voltage as their equivalent device. So that means there is 8 volts across this 10 ohm resistance on the very end here. Hence we can calculate the current through that 10 ohm resistance and that current will be its voltage divided by its resistance which will be uh, 8 volts divided by 10 ohms 0.8 amps kinda makes sense because looking back let me go back, I can't go back, okay <clears throat> looking back if I did have 1.6 amps coming this way and it had two paths to choose 
either a 10 ohms and a 10 ohms it's going to split evenly 0.8 amps is going to go this way and 0.8 amps is going to go this way it's the, the two paths are equivalent so it's going to split evenly into those two paths alright let's go back so we got 0.8 amps going through that 10 ohms that 10 ohms was a 5 ohm plus 5 ohm combination it looked like this so there is 0.8 amps going through each of those 5 ohm resistances in series and hence there's 0.8 amps going through the 5 ohms that we we wanted to know about so the current through our 5 ohm resistance is indeed 0.8 amps and the power dissipated in that 5 ohms then is I squared R 0.8 amps squared times 5 ohms what does that give us? 0.8 squared times 5 3.2 watts so the power dissipated in the 5 ohm resistor we were concerned about is 3.2 watts and that is one way to do this problem we could also have realized when we had the situation where we have those two tens in parallel with 1.6 amps coming in to that junction we could use current division to figure out the current in the 10 ohms and like I, we, we used the intuition to do this before but we actually have an equation for this the current say in uh, the first resistance is equal to the opposite resistor 10 over the sum of the two 10 plus 10 times the current going in which is 1.6 amps and that will give us in this case 1 half times 1.6 or 0.8 amps and then we can proceed in the same way as we did before so that just proves the same idea 3.2 watts that's our answer for this problem